if he could convert, then they could be reconciled with Satan. Satan cannot convert because that's the nature of an angel. Therefore, a reconciliation between Satan and Christ is absolutely, intrinsically impossible. Between a true follower of Satan and a true follower of Christ, there cannot be reconciliation. Between Archbishop of Fed and the, the Second Vatican Council, which was the work of the devil, there could not be reconciliation. If there's now a, an attempt at reconciliation between the followers of the Archbishop and the followers of the Council, it's false. Any such reconciliation today can only be false. Because the Romans are pretending to come some way towards the Archbishop, and the followers of the Archbishop are going some way towards Rome, towards Concilia Rome. It's maybe they're meeting at one third, two thirds, at two thirds, one third, at half and half, but in any case, the idea that you're reconciling the Satan and Christ, that you're reconciling the religion of man and the religion of God, it's impossible. And therefore, the reconcilia any reconciliation that's going to come out, that's going to be smoothly achieved in the next in the next year, two years, three years, is going to be false. And you and I can't go along with it because it will be necessarily a betrayal of Christ, because all of the false reconciliations belong to Satan. Satan says, oh, we can reconcile, oh, there's no problem, in order to draw the followers of Christ away from Christ. But there's no reconciliation in this case possible. And therefore, you're quite right. Well, Therefore, what happened, sure enough, the leaders of the false society start persecuting, the false followers of Archbishop V start persecuting the true followers. Just like when they followed Archbishop V, they were persecuted by the, by the council, by the conciliarists, the followers of the council. Then when they go over to the, the council, they start persecuting those who still follow Archbishop V. It's completely logical and absolutely clear. It's exactly what's in the Gospel. The day will come when they will think that they're serving God by throwing you out of the church. They threw the society out of the mainstream churches and the society had to rebuild its own churches. And it built the, the lovely church in Post Falls. And it's built lovely churches everywhere. I think particularly of several churches built by the society in Germany, which, are, which have real, real art. There's some real artists at work. France also. And in the United States, you've got some lovely churches built by tradition because the tradition of faith, the faith means that people have God in their hearts. If they have God in their hearts, they produce beautiful art, beautiful music, beautiful art. You can't love God and produce ugly art. It's not possible. And therefore, the churches of the side tradition produce a lovely. And now, once again, exactly the same, all of that is going to be lost. But it's, my friend, it's not a question of buildings. And it's not either a question of numbers. Console yourselves. You're not nearly as many here as they are undoubtedly today in the church in Post Falls or even maybe in the mainstream churches, although you and I know that the mainstream churches have, have less and less people attending. The society still has a good number of people attending because a number of those people are deceived. They don't realize what's happened. They don't realize that the faith, they're in grave danger of the faith slipping away from them by fault of the leaders, by fault of the of headquarters in particular, of Bishop Fellow in particular, of headquarters around him, and then of the priests and judicial superiors that follow him, the follow headquarters, the, the, the souls are being misled and they're going to, they, 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 there's a grave risk of their being led back into the arms of the mainstream church, which is, which is which belongs to and is doing the work of Satan. Therefore, you are quite right to have pulled out. You're quite right to be here today. And you're right to be doing what you can. Even if it's, once again, back to St. Ramada or St. Red Lion, or whatever it is. <laughs> doesn't matter. What matters is the faith. And you may lose your priests. You may lose your sacraments, I've said. But again, if you keep the faith, that's the heart of the matter. Priests and sacraments, even priests and sacraments, are not the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is the faith. Because what is the faith? The faith is basically a right attitude towards God. 
And that right attitude spells out as, I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ. It spells out as the creed. But the creed is the spelling out of what is a basically right attitude towards God. Which is why St. Paul says, you can't please God without faith. Faith is the very first element of getting straight with Almighty God. Straightening out the mind, and then the heart straightens out. But the heart follows that must follow the mind. People think as just as long as they have nice feelings, just as long as they have chocolate in their breast, as long as they have a lovely big gooey feeling inside, that they're all right. No way, Jose. That gooey feeling can be very misleading. I go to a film, a weepy, weepy Hollywood film, and I come out all gooey, but that's not of God. That's not necessarily of God. The faith is of God. The true faith is of God. And according to that faith, we must lead a life of penance and the way, go the way of the cross. And we, the, people don't like the way of the cross. It, the cross hurts. Mummy, it hurts. Yes, the cross does hurt. But it's the way to heaven. Where do you want it to hurt? Do you want it to hurt in this life or do you want it to hurt forever in, in the fires of hell? It hurts a lot more in hell than it ever does in this life. In much better to choose. St. Augustine said, God Punish me how you like in this life, so long as you don't have to punish me in the next <coughs> life. Augustine had his, Saint Augustine had his head on his shoulders. Hey, he saw, and it's worth enduring anything in this life in order to avoid the fires of hell in the next life. In order to avoid dying with the right, in, in, at the moment of death, having the wrong attitude towards God. And so, just as the mainstream threw out the Archbishop, so Bishop Foley is now throwing out the resistance, throwing them out of the churches, throwing out the priests, etc. Because he's lost his grip, he's lost it, he's lost the plot, as you say in America. He's lost the plot, he's, he no longer sees who, who really is Jesus Christ and where really is God. If he did see it, he would be back in line with the Archbishop and he would be back in line fighting against the errors of Vatican II and all of the errors that are taking so many souls on the road to hell. So today's gospel is right on the money, as you would say. But my dear friends, you're right. You're right. Uh, a number of you I know have discerned clearly that it is a problem of the faith. Uh, in, the, in the new societies, we can call it, like we can call the conciliar church the new church, the new society of Bishop Foley pretends that it isn't a question of faith. And they are deliberately keeping their people in a great deal of ignorance. Notice, that's not a good sign. Our Lord does not want people ignorant. He says uh, that in the, today's epistle, uh, vigilati, estoti prudentes et vigilati in orationibus. Be prudent, which is a quality of the mind, prudence. Prudence is situated in the mind. Be prudent and keep watch in your prayers. Stay awake, vigilati in orationibus. Stay awake in your prayers. Stay awake with your eyes open. Think, watch, don't go blind, don't fall asleep. Our Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane, vigilati et orati. You may have heard me say before, that is, our Lord said to the three favorite apostles, watch and pray. He did not say, just pray, which some people say, oh, just so long as you pray. No, 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 no. He didn't even say, pray and watch. Our Lord said, watch and pray. Why? Because if the apostles did not keep watch, if they didn't keep their eyes open, if they didn't stay awake, they'd fall asleep, and if they fell asleep, they would stop praying, which is exactly what happened. They fell asleep, and they were no longer praying, and they were no longer giving our divine Lord support, human support, in the moment when he most needed it. And they let him, they let him down at that crucial moment. And a few moments later, they would run away from him. They would run away from their be beloved and divine master. They would leave him in the hands of the temple guards. Stay awake, don't fall asleep. Television is a terrible means of falling asleep. It's, 
it puts many souls to sleep with this pretense that everything in the modern world is lovely and beautiful and getting better and better all the time. Nonsense, completely false. But television, you'll agree, that, that I'm sh quite sure you'll agree, a mass of people today are completely asleep as far as the things that Patrick are concerned. And Bishop Fernie puts people to sleep. He tries to put traditionalists to sleep. He tries to make them not awake and not think about what he's doing, not watch what he's doing, not keep watch on what he's doing. Because what he's doing is betraying. And many of the poor souls following the society don't realize it. Because they're deceived. They're kept ignorant and they're deceived. You're quite right to be doing what you're doing. Now there are problems if you join what we call, I always say in inverted commas, the resistance, and this afternoon, the, late, late this afternoon, I may say why I use those inverted commas always. The, the resistance, quote, quote, unquote, has problems of its own, no doubt. Our Lord never promised us an easy ride. And if we take, if we step outside the framework, we're going to be back in the cold wind, no doubt at all. And then we want authority. We want another authority. Let me leave you right now. We'll talk about that. I'll talk about that this evening. But let me leave you now with only one, with just one thought. We moderns are corrupt. We modern people are are the product of 500 years apostasy, of falling away, of civilization, Christian civilization falling away from God, of Catholic civilization falling away from God. Of course, there have been some good Catholics during those 500 years. There have been those that have done their best, definitely. Many souls have still gone to heaven, no doubt at all. But the fact is that, moulded as we are by the modern world, there are a number of things that we assume which are not true. We all of us have a good dose of liberalism in our bloodstream. What that means is that we don't see, uh, we, we, we're too inclined to follow authority. And so when authority goes wrong, as it did at Vatican II, so many Catholics simply followed blindly. They followed blindly. They were not awake, they were not seeing, they were not, their eyes were not open. The same thing today. Uh, a number are simply following the society because they don't see. And therefore, because they're blindly following authority. Now, if the resistance has an authority, if the resistance again has a leader, let's suppose, they'll 